Hi, look, I'm just wondering, do you believe that um, serious illness is actually manifested as an emotion? Um, other way around. Emotions manifest, emotions that are denied manifest serious illnesses. Okay, so in saying that, because I have cancer yep. and medicine has given me no hope. That's right. And I actually, you know, I'm on the path to do whatever I can because I have two small children, so I'm very determined. Yep. Um, and I just wanted to know how do you actually go about it? Because I've been I mean, with obviously got you know a series of emotions along the way and two years ago we lost our son so it was a hospital error and that sort of thing so I've obviously manifested that as well and I just want to know is it possible I guess I'm looking for it's possible to cure your cancer with by dealing with your emotions the, the big issue with cancer is that there is already a lot of emotional suppression to create the cancer mm -hmm. So, do you mind me asking where the cancer is? No, cervix. Cervix? And it's, yes, spread. Okay. The issue that you're facing is that you have some very, very deep um, anger and grief with, with, this, with sexuality and with sex itself. And that's what's affecting cancer in that, in that region for you. The, if I can go through what cancer is, so, um, I'll write it so you can see it at the back. So cancer, if we put that in brackets, it's an illness. It's a life-threatening illness. Right? Underneath cancer, so cancer is resulted from, from suppression. We're suppressing something emotionally. The suppression will be suppression of some kind of emotion. Now, usually it is the suppression of anger. Right? Now, under the anger, there is usually a fear and under the fear there is usually the real emotion which is usually going to be a grief uh, based emotion and usually with cancers there is also related emotions of shame, self shame, self it's like feeling bad about yourself. Now where you get the cancer depends upon what emotion is being suppressed. So, for example, if I've, got, if I've got cancer in a breast, then it would depend on whether it started in the left breast or the right breast as to what emotion I'm suppressing. If there will be an over-nurturing thing that I'm trying to do, which is resulted about wanting to get love from that particular... If it's the left side, it'll be from the female. If it's the right side, it'll be from the male. If I have cancer in the lungs, it will be some deep sadness that's occurred that I've suppressed, and this is why many smokers get lung cancer, because they, they smoke to suppress deep sadness that they don't want to feel, and then they cover that with a lot of deep anger about what they're sad about, and then, then of course that creates the cancer in the lungs. For, for many men there will be a prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is related, is very similar to cervix, cervical cancer in a woman. Prostate cancer for men is very similar, in that it's to do with the opposite gender. It's to do with some deep grief, grieving to do, that's covered then by some fear and covered by some anger about the opposite gender and about sex in, with the opposite gender. In each case, usually all of these things are based around the underlying grief is related to usually childhood events. So there will be things that have happened in your childhood related to sexuality <coughs> that have that you yet have grieved, that you need to allow yourself to grieve, but because they are powerful events, you've got some fear about grieving them, and you're worried about that, and so then that's created the anger, and then because you don't allow the anger to be there, you've suppressed the anger, and that then creates the body pain. Does that make sense as to how it's created? Mm -hmm. So, the way to work through it is firstly to step into the anger that you feel about sex and sexuality and the opposite sex, then, then ask yourself questions about what you're afraid of, and then eventually you'll get down, and you can do this quite rapidly, get down into the grief that you feel of some events, and I think you're aware of some of the events that happened in your childhood that may have caused you to have this feeling regarding sexuality that you have. Now, my, there's nothing that's triggering your mind? 
How does your mother feel about men? What does she do? Job wise or? No, for men. For men? Um, you say your mum loves men. Well, she's married to my dad and it's right. We've been very happily married for yeah. a very long time. And, and who is the primary carer in the relationship, do you feel? Probably dad. Okay, so what, what emotion does your mum have towards your dad? Um, so does dad do everything mum wants? Yeah, control. So he's so mum is the controlling person in the relationship. Yes. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So you would have grown up in this family environment where your mother is the controlling person in the relationship. Can you see Can you see why she would want to control a man? So she doesn't want to be open and vulnerable and have an equal relationship with a man. She tells herself she does, but she doesn't. She wants to have a controlling, the controlling relationship. So she has some emotions of being special, you know, and the man makes her feel special and wanted and all those kind of emotions. Mm -hmm. right. so, so there must be an emotion inside of your mother of some deep anger towards men to cause her to want to control men to get exactly what she wants. Now, can you see anything related to your relationship with men in there? Well, I guess I can be a bit of a control group, but you don't okay. have to be honest. Okay, so there's, so there's feelings you want from men, and you feel men should give you those feelings. And that is where, that's the anger level that you're experiencing. There's a lot of anger in that, aren't you, that you're unaware of, that you've suppressed, because your mother has suppressed it in herself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And how did your father treat you? Did he, he treated you like, sort of like a princess? And, uh, and so that's caused you to feel what about men? That men should treat me like a princess. <laughs> exactly. And you feel totally justified with that emotion at the moment. But it's not an actually loving emotion. Mm -hmm. So the key is to start experimenting a little with this emotion mm -hmm. and start working through how, how forceful you feel about that inside of yourself and why that's the case. Because th this is the cause of the cancer. There is a there's grief surrounding that issue, surrounding your mum as well in a connection. And there's also a connection with a spirit who's connected with you, who has the same grief in herself. So there's a do you I don't know if you believe in spirits or not? Yeah, like a like a grandmother spirit or a or uh, this is a spirit who has, has the same kind of feelings you have towards men. And this spirit also passed with cancer. My grandmother. Yep. Okay. So your grandmother is actually affecting your cancer at the moment mm -hmm. as well. I had a dream about that about three months ago. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so it's the combination of your own emotion, which has been a long-term running emotion in the women's side of your family, your mother's family, and and that long-term running emotion, and actually it's also been in the father's side of your family with the women in his family as well. And because of this long-term emotion, you have that emotion in you, and your grandmother is very connected with you. She feels a strong rapport with you. But she, she actually, I believe she might have even passed with the same problem, did she, or? Well, she had a lung cancer. Lung cancer. But, um, yeah, I guess I don't know what type of cancer it was in terms of cell-wise when you're talking about cancer, but it does normally appear in the lung, never in the cervix. Yeah, yeah. So there is some really deep feelings you need to work through about that and it's, and it's a family based generational feeling that's been impressed and, and the core of it is this emotion you have that men should treat me like a princess. So if you can start allowing yourself to connect to that emotionally, you'll start connecting with why one of the feelings you have that you feel like is, well yes, of course they should, is the, one of the feelings I can feel back when I say those words. Right? Yeah. And then allow yourself to go, well, why should they? Like, why should they treat you any different than you treat them? Mm -hmm. Why should they, like, sure, treat a woman like a princess, but does that mean you've got to treat him like a prince? Mm -hmm. Does your mother treat your father like a prince? No. Or is it just your father treating your mother like a princess? Okay, so can you see there's some imbalance in their relationship there? Mm -hmm. right?
which obviously is a multi-generational family thing that has been impressed upon yourself. Now, it is definitely related to sex and sexuality, this issue, coming from generationally through your families. So you probably, if you ask your mum about her mother and her grandmother, you may find that there's some sexual injuries um, that they've had while they're on Earth um, related to this emotion being within in you girls now, your mum and yourself. Does that make sense? Now, if you allow yourself to connect to those things, you'll find you'll be able to get to the cause of the cancer. The problem with cancer illnesses is that we, we don't like looking at ourselves very much because we think, well, you know, what, what I've found is that many people with cancers that I've been talking to don't want to get into the emotion of how dominating and domineering they can be. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's something inside of yourself to just be aware of. Is, is if you can allow yourself to feel that controlling part of you, because it's that controlling part of you which is driven by some of these emotions and a core emotion towards men, that controlling part of you is actually generating your cancer as well. And it's about releasing that. And that will help you work through the issue. Okay. Is that? Thank you. I can't really say too much more without having yeah, a problem. Yeah, sure. So, thank you very yeah. much. And Linda, thanks. Lisa, sorry. Hi, it's just about this girl that was just talking. Yeah. Why is the disease showing up in her and not her mother when the emotion's coming from her mum? Because quite often the children are dying, but the parents are living um, the usu life. Usually it's because the ch child is more sensitive emotionally than the parent. Um, so um, there is also things to do with the child's personality that are involved with it as well. And then there is also the combination of emotions coming from both lineages being impressed, and then there's also the added issue of spirit attachment. So, so the truth probably is that the grandmother is not that attached to the mother, but more attached to the granddaughter, that's one issue. So, so what, I'm, what I'm basically saying is, the reason why it happens in one generation and not another is that there are so many a variety of factors that actually make it different for the child and for the parent. Now, in, in your family's case, there is, on both lineages, this injury exists. The reason why your father, for example, is placating the woman all the time and treating the woman like a princess to often his own detriment is because he was taught to do that by his own, his own parents and what happened in their relationship. Does that make sense? So you, it's sort of like, if you can think of it down, there's the mother side of the family coming down towards you and then there's the father side of the family coming down towards you and both of them had the same emotions so now the, those emotions are going to sort of like double up in you. Does that make sense? Because they're unhealed. So there's a lot of variety of factors of it which will occur, which will create the problem in the child when the mother or the father may not necessarily have had it. I've seen many cases where the child dies of cancer and then later on, 20 years later, the parents finish up dying of the same form of cancer. And the reason why that happens is because the child has died because there's this concentration of emotions from both the male and female lineages in the child, but the emotions still existed to a lesser extent in the parents. And so that's uh, happened in times as well where we, we find that occurring. And this is also why most cancers have a higher occurrence in certain like family lines because it's actually the emotions in those family lines that generate the disease. Does that make sense?